Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys everything you need to know about gradients inside of Photoshop CC 2018. So first off, getting started. The gradients option is available over on the left hand side, the tools window. If you see a paint bucket, you need to right click that, and it's going to give you this drop down list where you can select either the gradient tool, the paint bucket tool, or the 3D material drop tool. So the gradient tool has this little icon here. If you see that, you just need to left click on this button, but in any case, make sure you have the gradient tool selected. And the difference between the gradient tool and the paint bucket tool is when we use the paint bucket, it applies one solid color over whatever we have selected. But if we apply a gradient, it's going to transition between whichever colors we have selected up here from the starting point to the ending point. So We'll get started here by doing a linear gradient. You can see that there's different types of gradients available here. We'll talk about those in a bit. Um, and I'll select the top left-hand one, which is not actually those two colors, but rather foreground to background color. And because I want to apply the gradient in full, I'm going to set the opacity, otherwise known as the alpha or transparency, to 100%. And now our gradient in the selector actually matches the ones in the presets. So this is going to be transitioning. Uh, by default from the foreground color, that's the one in the top left over here, to the background color, that's the red in the background. So let's go ahead and try this. When you left click, you're setting the starting point for the gradient, and wherever you let go is going to be essentially the end point for that gradient. The distance you drag does matter as well as the direction. So if I drag from here to about over there, what you're going to notice is that the direction is basically where the gradient is progressing from, so black down here to the red in the top right hand corner. And depending on the distance of the gradient, whatever is before the distance, so in that case this black corner over here, is going to have the color on the far left in terms of this color bar, and whatever's beyond where the gradient endpoint is, is going to have the color on the far right, which is this solid red color. And Everywhere in between is going to have some proportion of both of those colors. Yes, it's also possible to have more than two colors in a gradient. We'll talk about that in a minute. So to demonstrate, though, um, how the distance of your gradient matters, I'll just do a very small one here. And what you'll see is that we clearly have this solid red section in the top right, the solid black section in the uh, left and the bottom left, and then there's this middle section where the actual gradient is taking place, the transition from one color to the other. So the larger you want that this transition to be, the further you should drag this gradient. And uh, of course the direction matters, so if I drag from the bottom right to the top left, you're going to have the background color in the top left, that's the red, and the foreground color, the black, in the bottom right. So let's quickly demonstrate the other types of gradients that are available to you. Obviously linear gradients are very basic and easy to use. Um, there's also radial gradients, which is going to give you a circle at the starting point, and you drag to basically set the size of that circle. Um, the endpoint doesn't matter as much because here it's the same shape all the way around. So really it's just starting point and distance that matters. You can also come over here to check the reverse option which in this case will make the background color the inner color, so you get a red dot with the black background. Then there's the angle gradient, which looks a little bit like this. Notice how the gradient goes around your starting point in kind of a clockwise fashion. You can also reverse it to make it go counterclockwise instead. And then we have the reflected gradient, where when you start your gradient, it's actually going to reflect onto both sides. Basically, it's creating a copy of the gradient to whichever side you didn't designate. So if I drag if I drag over here with the gradient, it's going to do the exact same gradient on the left-hand side. And then finally, the diamond gradient, very similar to the radial gradient, except we're getting a diamond shape. And uh, the direction you choose does matter a little bit, because it's going to kind of rotate the diamond around. So here, as opposed to the radial gradient, the direction you choose actually matters, because it's going to ra rotate uh, your diamond gradient around, so depending on where you want all those middle points to kind of jut out, um, that's going to matter there. And if you want a really big diamond, just drag very far distances on your gradient. Now, of course, you're not limited to just foreground to background color gradients. If we click on this gradient selector, 
You can see that there's a lot of different presets. You can also find some online if you want to go ahead and look for them. And you can also create your own. So here let's select a gradient which has many different colors. We'll just choose the spectrum gradient, a bit fun. And uh, what you'll notice when we apply this is we get a lot of different colors transitioning into each other, basically the entire visible light spectrum. Uh, as before still, whenever the gradient is over, basically before the starting point and after the end point, we get the end colors for that gradient. In this case, the end color and the start color is solid red. So just note that depending on how much you want this gradient to take part in your overall layer or your overall selection, just drag the more you want that distance to be. Now I mentioned selection, so I guess we can demonstrate something pretty cool here. Whenever you use a marquee tool, that would be like a rectangular marquee, an elliptical marquee, you can select a portion of your document. It doesn't need to be the whole thing. What we can actually do is with that selection, we can apply a gradient inside of just that selection. So here, let's go ahead and do that. And you see that the full image is not uh, basically managed at all by this gradient, but only inside of the portion we select. So you don't have to use the rectangular marquee or elliptical marquee. You could just as easily use the lasso tool and draw some really weird shape there and do the same thing. Now let's show editing a gradient. I'm going to uh, select one a little bit simply here. Let's choose this four color gradient here, which is yellow, purple, orange, and then blue. And uh, now if I double click here, it's going to give us the gradient editor. So in the gradient editor, we can do things like remove a color, which you can select a color and then hit delete, or you can actually just drag this down to remove it instantly. Um, you can also click to add in more points of color. Now uh, on top, you have opacity stops or points, and on bottom you have color points. So if we drag these around, it's going to change how our gradient looks. And what you'll notice is that between every two points, you also get this middle point section. So, and by default, between two of these stops, you're going to get an equal distribution of color because this middle point is in the middle. But if we actually select this diamond and shift it, um, what you'll notice is that the color distribution between two points will start to favor one side or the other. So if you want there to be a lot more purple than orange between these two points, you can do that. Uh, let's say over here on the right, you want to make this almost entirely blue. We drag this color selector over. And by doing that, we can get more control over the exact colors of the gradient between two stops. Now with opacity, that would be for controlling for transparency. So if you want a point to have partial transparency in a gradient, you can just select here, and then you can drop the opacity down. So when we do that, as the gradient gets closer to that opacity point, it's going to become more and more transparent, meaning that more and more background colors, layers that are below that gradient layer, are going to show through. So if we apply this gradient here, uh, which we'll do in a second, then what would happen is some of the black from the background would show through because that's the only other visible layer. So before we do that though, you want to make sure that the gradient you're working on is actually in this preset pool of gradients so that if you switch to a different gradient at any other time, you don't lose your work on the gradient. So I'm going to hit new here, and that's going to add another gradient option in the presets, and we'll be able to keep working with it as we open up Photoshop documents and start working on new projects. So I'll hit OK here. And in this layer three, note that layers two and one are both disabled for visibility. I can just apply this gradient, and as I toggle on the background on and off, you'll see that the background color of black influences the middle section of the gradient because there there's partial transparency, which means that the black in the background shows through, making the overall image darker in those areas. So I could do the same thing with white as well. So let's actually demonstrate that really quick. If we had a white background, it would look something like this. Now, if you have a gradient that has transparency in the editor, but you don't want to apply that transparency, you can just come over here to the transparency option, uncheck that, and apply it again. And even though the gradient in the editor has transparency, it doesn't actually apply when we put it on our Photoshop document. So the best way I've found if you want to create a new gradient or just override another one is to select the old gradient 
that you want to edit from. Make your changes as you see fit. So I'm just removing a couple key points here. And right click the old gradient, hit delete, and then hit new with the same name. And then that basically is going to effectively replace the one that already existed in the presets. So now we can hit OK. Uh, the old one is gone and we only have the new preset, um, which should stick there as we start new Photoshop documents so that we can use it in anything we're working on. So all that put aside, that's pretty much all you need to know about gradients in Photoshop CC 2018. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.